All right, what's up, y'all? Uh, welcome back to another episode of Minecraft Therapy. It's the intro jingle that I'm making up on the spot uh, because I don't know how else to intro this without being awkward. But yeah, what's up, guys? Um, welcome back to Minecraft Therapy. Today, I want to share with y'all some stories from oh fuck oh fuck oh my god I'm so dead I'm so dead I'm so dead what what a way to start the episode what a way to start the episode let me just say I have a very convoluted setup right here that makes it hard for me to play the game um that was really sad that was really sad let's respawn and probably all my stuff is gone huh but um yeah today damn that was really sad but today, I want to talk to y'all about uh, some Stanford stories, because I got a lot of Stanford stories. Uh, I don't know if they're the most entertaining or fun Stanford stories. They're definitely not the Stanford stories you see that other vloggers make that are like, Oh my god, my time at Stanford, it was so fun. I met so many people, and I go to so many parties. It's a movie. That is definitely. Those are definitely not my stories. My stories are more like, um, you know... I get back from a gym at 1 a.m. and I'm depressed and I have a P set that I haven't started that I need to do that's due the next day. So those are the types of stories we'll be hearing today. But enough with the intro. I'm always like really way too long with the intros on these things. So let's get right into it. Stanford stories. So the first story I have um, is from the very first, my very first day at Stanford actually, uh, when I was moving in. So the first day of Stanford, um, yeah, you'll move in. You show up. There's a bunch of people. They check you in. You, you give them their name. You give them your name, and then they're like, "Oh, hello, introverted madness. Here's your stuff and your keys, and go get to know your roommates and stuff like that." Um, I had actually showed up to uh, around Stanford like a day or two earlier, uh, just because my parents are like the really like over prepared type like that where they wanted to show up like early to like I don't know like scout out um the area beforehand like we were cartographers or something so we, we went there scouted it out it was fine um it, it was exactly the same as it had been when I visited there like earlier in the year so that was great and then the day of we woke up in the hotel room because my family's not from uh, California Woke up in a hotel room. I think the time to like show up was like some range from like 9 a.m. to noon or something like that. Not exactly like that, but like something like that. And uh, my parents and I, we just we just showed up like exactly. I'm not even gonna bother to try and like reclaim my stuff because I know it's all burned down. But I literally don't have anything else here. I don't have any wood. Was I carrying all my possessions with me? Like. But, um, yeah. So, yeah. The time to show up was, like, from 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. My parents and I, we were like, oh, we're just going to show up at 12. Who cares? Whatever. We show up. Um, everyone else is already there. As you can tell, I was, like, not super. Some people, when they, like, some people were there, like, I'm guessing, like, exactly at, like, 9 a.m. They were like, I must get everything out of Stanford. I love Stanford so much. I've been dreaming of this moment since I was but a wee child. But yeah, I was <laughs> um, not to hate on those people. I, I, I'm definitely making myself seem cooler than I was. But I think I was just too stupid to realize that I should have like showed up like earlier than just the last possible moment. So we showed up at 12. I was like the last person to check in. They were like, oh, hey, um, what's up? What's your name? Blah, blah. The RAs were very nice, I'm sure. I don't remember specifically, but, like, I'm sure the RAs were very nice and welcoming and made me feel, you know, part of the community or whatever. Um, yeah, so I showed up. They gave us all my year. They gave us all free bike helmets, which is interesting because if you ride around campus on Stanford, you'll notice that literally uh, no one wears helmets if you're an undergrad, which is... Uh, obviously extremely unsafe because if you fall off that bike while you're not wearing a helmet you could get seriously messed up but guess what uh wearing a bike helmet 
doesn't make you look cool. It doesn't make you look cool. You know what else is uh, not safe? Riding a bike without holding the handlebars. But people love to do that at Stanford. So um, as you can tell, our brains are underdeveloped because we care about looking cool more than actual safety. But anyway, as I was saying, uh, my year they gave us all free helmets. And I got that my first day. And then like for the rest of the year, no one wore those helmets. Like I literally may saw like maybe one or two people wearing those helmets the entire year even though like they were free and we all had them and then i'll tell this i'll explain this later later in a different story but like i got a ticket once for um driving without a bike light so i had to like take this class to like get my ticket expunged and in the class they were like yeah this donor guy donated like a million dollars so that everyone all the freshmen could get free helmets and then we saw that no one wear them so we stop that program because you guys are too stupid because even when we literally give you free helmets you guys don't want to wear them <laughs> so i thought that was funny but um yeah that was that showed up thursday got the helmet got all the i don't know orientation stuff a bunch of packets I, I don't know what the fuck was there and then um yeah then i went into my room uh i lived in robley uh, in 1C. So if you guys, if you guys are on Stanford and know Robley, uh, 1C is like the for, for forgotten corner of Robley or something. It's like the forbidden corner that no one visits ever. Um, I'm not going to blame the position of my dorm for the fact I had no friends, but, uh, let me just say, I don't know if it is entirely a coincidence that I lived in that, in that hallway and I had no friends. Let's just put it that way because that hallway was basically like, no one ever needed to go to that hallway, basically. Like, if you lived on the second floor, uh, you might go through, like, 1B or, like, 1A to, like, take the stairs up to your place. So, like, if you lived in, like, 1A or 1B or literally any other hall, you would have traffic of, like, other people trying to get to, like, their room. Where, where I lived, no one ever had a reason to go there. So <laughs> that was fun. Um, but, yeah, I showed up super late. Uh, probably the last person to show up. And then um, I met my roommates. That was cool. And I got the last pick of of bed and, like, desk, which is fine because actually I enjoyed the place, the desk and <laughs> bed I ended up getting. So that was that. Um, first day. What's up, dudes? It's Future Me editing this video. As we know by now, my 8 gigs of RAM are not enough sometimes and the video and audio cuts out. But in this part of the video, I was basically saying how on the first day, the dining hall food was really good compared to what they would serve normally as I would soon learn there. Like the first day they served this chicken and vegetables and it was really good and really nicely presented. And then it all went downhill from there. They were like, ah, shit, the parents are here. The freshmen are here. We got to set up their expectations real high so that we can crush them later and really break down break down their hope in the world and make them jaded. So let's serve them some really good food now and then just shit on their lives later. So that was that. Um, yeah, what else happened? All right, let's try and see if we can get our Minecraft stuff back, even though I really doubt it. Oh my God, I was carrying a map and shit too, wasn't I? This is really sad. I can't believe I did that. Like, And I couldn't even click my water bucket fast enough. Because I'm, oh my god. Anyway, yeah, first day, don't remember too much. I'm sure there's a bunch of orientation stuff. And then at the end of the day, they gathered us all into like the Robley big auditorium thing. We played like a few icebreakers. Uh, we played this game like Rock, Paper, Scissors Champion. Basically, like you play, I don't, this is a stupid story. Google Rock, Paper, Scissors Champion if you want to know what we played. Something funny that happened was um, they started talking about the alcohol policy. And obviously, like, as freshmen, we're all, like, 18, and they were like, yeah, the alcohol policy, basically, if you're gonna drink alcohol, uh, have your door open, please. Like, we're not, like, just, that's all we ask. And then someone in the audience was like, uh, you guys keep talking about having your door open when we drink alcohol, but I'm pretty sure we're all under 21, so how do we get alcohol? And that was kind of funny, because you were like, uh -huh. You don't know how to get alcohol. You don't know about fake IDs. <laughs> so that, that was a funny joke from the, not a funny joke, just a funny thing that happened first day. Um, 
Yeah, and then we also had Band Run, which was fun. I think um, it's supposed to be a surprise. I think because they like to like <sighs> the fatal place where I died. It's supposed to be a surprise Band Run because I like when uh, the RAs for my place were were like getting us ready to go on Band Run. They didn't like they were all like secretive about it. So. Uh, if you don't want to know what band run is and you want to have your Stanford experience be totally pure, skip this part. Um, then again, like coronavirus um, is happening. So if you're a freshman or going to be a freshman, you probably won't get to experience band run anyway. Aha! Sobering reality uh, hitting you in the face in an introverted madness video. But yes, uh, skip this part if you don't want to uh, skip like a few minutes ahead if you don't want to know about band run. Um, do I have anything left here? No. This that was really sad. <laughs> but um, yeah, band run basically. So th all the RAs gathered us up in the auditorium, and then like sometime in the night, band came. Basically, the Stanford band is a bunch of um. Um, these are not my words. These are probably someone else's words. A bunch of ob obnoxious assholes. They probably take pride in in being that, but. That's who they are. Um, <laughs> and they came by and played their b instruments. And then as, you know, a college freshman on your first day, you're like, oh, my God, this is so cool. Band run. Um, they have, they have, they have like, uh, LED lights on their tubas. This is so awesome. And then basically what they did was play band music really loud in front of our dorm. And then they just started running to other freshman dorms. And then what you're supposed to do as a freshman is join band on their run around to other freshman dorms, hence the name uh, Band Run. Oh my god, I'm going to make this situation worse for myself, aren't I? Yes, I am. This lava situation is getting gnarly. But um, yeah, so they came, played, played their music, and then I fucking ran that shit to other dorms. And then as a freshman, obviously, now that I'm jaded... Um, Obviously, I, I look back on those and I'm like, ugh, ugh, those disgusting days when I was happy. But at the time, it was actually a pretty uh, cool and neato experience. So that's that. Um, and then, yeah, what ended up happening was that we would end, we ended band run at, like, Memorial Church, Memchu, as it's colloquially known. I fucking hate um, the acronyms that Stanford has, as you... As you may have heard me say in a previous video but yeah we stopped in front of memchu and then every dorm like has a flag or something and like we waved a flag it was a very like freshman thing but like it got me it, that, i remember that night i was like wow like stanford actually could be fun i could like have a good time here um so that turned out to be a fucking lie but uh yeah that was fun that was a fun first day um after that uh, there, we had a few days before classes actually started, so, like, the first day for freshmen is a few, like, maybe a few days before classes start. Maybe they get you, like, the Friday before, and then you start classes on Monday or something. So I had a few days to kill in between, you know? The idea, I think, is you're supposed to make friends and get to know campus, blah, blah, blah. So, yeah, I, I did that whole thing. There's a bunch of stories I could tell from there, probably, but I'll, I'll focus on one, which is that, um, our dorm had a Facebook group, and in this Facebook group, they uh, posted something like, hey, we're having a pickup game at uh, at the gym in like a few minutes, a pickup game of basketball. And I was on my, my elementary school basketball team, so, and I hadn't played basketball in probably over five years, uh, possibly 10, by the time I was a college freshman. But I was like, hey, I'm going to put myself out there. I want to make friends. So I went to that gym, and there were some people from the dorm, some RAs, and they were like, hey, are you from, from Robley? And I was like, yeah. And they were like, hey, let's play some pickup ball. And I literally, I, not literally, but I sucked so much ass in that game. <laughs> like, there were, there were some freshmen from the dorm there, but there were also, like, some like upperclassmen there also playing pickup and they I, I just got like schooled so hard like um I airballed a three 
I got a pass, I airballed a three, and then I think from that moment on, uh, everyone around me was like, fuck this guy, this guy, fuck this guy. Uh, <laughs> and as a freshman, I was traumatized from that. Um, I felt that I was being, uh, you know, shunned for my lack of athletic ability and that I had let everyone down. Um, I, I, don't, I, I do think, like, they were, like, looking at me kind of weird, like, who the fuck is this guy? Because I tried to, like, pick and roll someone on, like, a check or something, and they were like, dude, you, you don't pick and roll that. And I was like, oh. And I, I just felt really embarrassed and ashamed. And, um, and that was the moment I decided, fuck this. I'm not going to make any friends. I'm going to be by myself, live my life by myself. Fuck this school. I hate everyone. I'm going to be antisocial, and that would lead to the next three years of pain in my life. So, moral of the story, if you're going to, um, don't, don't play pickup basketball your first week at Stanford. That's the moral of the story. Don't do any athletic activities unless you're an athlete. And even if you're an athlete, maybe stay away from the athletic activities too. So, there's that. Uh, I almost died. I wouldn't. Okay, I didn't almost die, but I almost got in a, a a bike crash my first day biking to class. Um, I think I didn't realize how the brakes worked, and I also didn't realize that you should uh, wait for other people when there's like an intersection. So I just fucking slammed into this intersection, um, ran from the post office by the bookstore, uh, just just going super fast. Uh, <laughs> And I need to get back to my uh, house before it gets dark, but I'm going to get this iron at the very last second. So yeah, I slammed in that intersection really hard. I realized how to use my brakes at the last second, so I stopped really abruptly and then almost had someone behind me crash into me and kill me. So that was not fun either. Um, so yeah, as you can tell, start of freshman year was kind of rough for me. <laughs> uh, possibly a bad omen. But yeah, that was that. Uh, yeah, another fun fact about my freshman year, I did not go to a single party my freshman year. Not a single frat party, not even a single like dorm party, which are much lamer than like not a single party uh, was attended by me. Um, that was probably due to the fact that I had no friends because I swore that off uh, after the basketball incident, like, like I said. You might think I'm, like, exaggerating about, like, that basketball experience, but, like, between that and, like, um, everyone at breakfast getting up when I, like, sat down to eat breakfast, I was, like, legitimately scarred from those things for, like, a while, and then I think that just snowballed. But, um, yeah, uh, I didn't go to any parties my freshman year. Um, so that was fun. Didn't, didn't uh, have to go to a hospital for alcohol poisoning, so that's a win. Uh, my second year, my sophomore year, I got more interested. I was I was curious more than anything. I was like, what are these parties that uh, the media has implanted into my brain about college that are so hype where uh, the alcohol is bountiful and so are uh, attractive human beings, apparently. So I was curious. I'm not going to lie. I was curious. So sophomore year... I got up in my hoodie and my sweatpants <laughs> like 11 p.m. on a Saturday and I was like, you know what? I'm just going to follow everyone because normally what happens, um, future introverted madness here again, just wanted to say that the flow of traffic on weekend nights will generally flow towards the row, which is this place on campus where a bunch of Greek houses are and most uh, parties and noise complaints stem from. And if you just like kind of generally follow the flow of traffic of people, you'll find your way to a party. <laughs> so that's what I did. I was like sweatpants and all, fucking got up. I was like, I'm going to check out what the fuck's going on. And the party I went to check out was called Euro Trash. Um, let's not get too deep into it here, but basically Euro Trash is like this, like a stereotypical first the first party of the year on campus or whatever and um yeah freshmen get really excited for it because it's the first party their first college party they get to experience but um 
Um, yeah, parties at Stanford. I feel like I might have mentioned this in a previous video, but really nothing to write home about. Um, just a bunch of sweaty people dancing in the dark until 1 a.m. listening to um, either one person's really eclectic EDM playlist on Spotify or Top 40. And then the lights come on and you're like, oh, everyone here looks really sweaty and gross. And you go home or you go to tap and then you go home and lay in bed and you feel sad about your life. But uh, this specific time, like I said, sophomore year, went to Eurotrash, checked it out. Um, I couldn't actually get in, I think, because I couldn't figure out where the fucking door was and like how to get in. And then like literally like a few minutes after I showed up, the police showed up and they were like, shut this down. The police at Stanford are like very anal. They like hate everything. They hate bicyclists. They hate parties. They hate, I think if you just exist on campus, um, SUPD has it out for you. So know that. But yeah, I showed up at Eurotrash sophomore year by myself, mind you, which is like terrible look, really awkward show up at a party by yourself wearing sweatpants and just not know what you're doing. But uh, I did that and the party got shut down. And I, and once it shut, got shut down, actually, I think I was able to enter. But then everyone was leaving. So that was basically my, my experience was that I showed up to the party, couldn't figure out how to get in. And then everyone left. And I was like, oh, parties kind of suck. <laughs> but, um, yeah. Um, and then as the years would go on, I would learn more about Stanford parties. Ooh, foreshadowing. But maybe that's another episode. But, yeah. Um, another fun fact. I woke up, like, 1 p.m. Um, on, like, almost, like, every Sunday because, like, I was at that period of my life where I was recovering from like not sleeping enough in high school, so I just slept like extra. <laughs> so I slept until 1 p.m. every every Sunday, um, and then I would mosey my ass over to brunch, which would close at like one. So I, I wake up at like probably 12:30, show up to brunch at like 12:45, and then just shovel as much food on my plate as possible, and then eat it, and then go go on my merry way. So yeah, that's fun. Um, going back to the police, which I mentioned previously, I always fucking got killed by a police car my freshman year. So I live in Robley. Um, I lived in Robley, and um, if you look up Robley on Google Maps, uh, I'll I'll leave a link to the street view of it. But if you if you look at Robley, there's like kind of a side street entrance to Robley, um, where if you're riding a bike, you can take a left turn into there. And it's like kind of faster to like get into Robley that way. Uh, once I was biking, and the way to get to that side entrance is like down a hill. So if you're on a bike, you'll be like going pretty fast. So once I was going down that hill, going pretty fast, and I wanted to turn in that side entrance, and then behind me I hear a car, and I'm like, oh, I hate dry. I, like I hate biking when there are cars around because I feel like I'm gonna die. So I'm like. Uh, and I also like don't want to like have this guy like slow down for me so I'm like okay I'm going pretty fast I'm just going to turn really fast into this side entrance before um, this car gets here so I turn and then I hear the car like beep or something I don't even remember I just turn into there I don't even think anything of it and then I hear the car like follow me into that side entrance and I'm like what the fuck and I look, and it's a fucking police officer. I'm like, oh my god. And I like, kind of, I'm like, kind of annoyed at this point because I'm like, what the fuck is this guy like bothering me for? So he comes out of his car, and he's like, oh, did you know, that? like, because I didn't signal before I turned uh, left. So he's like, oh, did you, I could have hit you, blah 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 blah. And I'm like, really annoyed at him, and like, so I, I just like really dismissively say something, like, and like also like. I'm like two steps away from like the entrance to my dorm. So I'm like, if I walk like two steps into my dorm, this guy's not gonna have any jurisdiction over me. So I'm, I, he's like, Bleh, I could've hit you. And I just say really dismissively like, oh, I thought there was like a stop sign there, which was a total like lie on my part. I, I had no idea if there was a stop sign or not. And if there was a stop sign, I probably wouldn't have stopped for it anyway. But uh, I just totally lied and said, oh, I thought there was a stop sign there. And I think like 
he he had something else to say. He was like, oh, like he should have still signaled or something, blah, 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 blah. And then he drove away. And then I was like, fuck that. But this whole time, I thought that me saying there was a stop sign was a total BS lie pulled out of my ass because, like, I had no idea if there was a stop sign. So for, like, from freshman year until now, I've been thinking there was no stop sign there. But I drove past that side entrance the other day, and there fucking is a stop sign. So, like, basically, that cop car should have stopped at the stop sign even if I had not randomly turned left and then he wouldn't have hit me so like just saying those police they be tripping they be tripping you know? but uh yeah that's that story um i always got ticketed once for driving without a bike light uh i was just i was just first of all my bike light got stolen because i left it somewhere and then i came back and it wasn't there anymore that wasn't fun but um yeah, I was driving without a bike light. There's, like, police literally waiting on, like, the sides of streets to pounce on bicyclists not wearing, not having bike lights. So uh, I got a ticket for that. And then from then on, if you literally just drive with your phone flashlight on and hold your phone in your hand, they won't give you a ticket. But I got a ticket for driving without a light. Had to go to a class about, like, safety so that I didn't have to pay the ticket, which was only, like, 20 bucks by... It was a matter of principle. I was not paying that ticket. But, uh, yeah, that's where I learned about the bike helmet thing and how um, it got all messed up. That's the, the bike class is probably its own story. There's a lot of stories here, but I, I, I got a list I want to get through. So let me continue. Um, I also did this thing called hashing uh, to get some side money because unlike some people at Stanford, I was not born into an extremely uh, wealthy family with billions of dollars. Uh, and able to wear three thousand um, dollar blouses to a lecture, so I, I had to make some money on the side. And the way I did that was hashing. Basically, hashing is um, a nice way of saying dishwashing because apparently calling Stanford suits dishwashers is too demeaning or something. But I was a dishwasher for um, what the fuck do we call them? Sweets. One of the sweets. Uh, sweets are this place on campus where you basically don't eat a dining hall, but like it's like its own dining hall. Anyway, I dishwashed for sweets. Um, that was fun, I guess. Not really. At one point in my life, I really needed like a decent, um, more change. So I was working like three nights a week um, and like two lunches, like three dinners and two lunches a week or something. And just like fucking doing dishes, mopping the floors, um, taking like the grease out of the grease like trap. What else? Um, fucking cleaning. Dude, fucking cleaning a grill. If you've never cleaned a grill in your life, like I, I, I don't wish that ever upon you. That shit is so hard. Like when you cook anything on a grill, getting like the oil and shit off that is like impossible. You have to, like, use this fucking, like, like, I don't know, like, Geneva Convention level uh, acid on the grill to, like, get that shit off. And, like, it smells, and then you have to, like, rub the grill with, like, a steel wool for, like, 20 minutes, and then it, that shit gets off. So, that wasn't fun. Um, but it gave me my working man chops, I guess, and I can use that in a rap song if I ever become, uh, if I ever decide to become a hip hop artist in the future, and um, pretend I had a harder upbringing than I actually did. But that's besides the point. Uh, <laughs> in addition to hashing, uh, you could also um, at sweets the chefs didn't cook on Sundays, so what they did was have student chefs on Sundays, and I was a student chef and got paid uh, fifteen bucks an hour to hash. Hash, I mean, uh, cook dinner on Sundays. So that was fun. If you're watching this and you recognize my voice, you know who you are. Thank you for getting through that shit with me and definitely being a way better cook than I was. But um, yeah, that was fun. Uh, one of the most traumatic times I had to cook, though, was I think I, I had to do this meal by myself because my co-chef was like sick or she had, she had to like call in. She called in a favor or something, and I just cooked the meal by myself. 
which was um, not easy because normally you have two chefs to cook for 60 people. And then it was all on me. So uh, basically what I did was uh, what the meal was that week was like pasta with shrimp or something. Um, and then, oh my God, if I die to a skeleton, I'm going to cry. And it's dark, so I need to go back to bed. Um, but yeah, I it was shrimp with spaghetti. I um, The shrimp was okay. I mega overcooked the spaghetti. And then it got all like mushy as well because I, I didn't realize at the time and like if you don't add sauce to spaghetti, the starch and spaghetti will make it stick together, uh, which is nasty. But I didn't realize that at the time. So I put the spaghetti out with literally no sauce or anything and it got all mushy. And then I heard someone in the dining hall be like, oh, you want to go somewhere else? Like, oh, like he, he was telling his friend on the phone, like, oh, like. There's some really like gross mushy spaghetti today. Like, uh, we should we should go. So oh my god! Oh no 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 no! <sighs> Two deaths. Uh, uh, how many times have I died in this show? But um, yeah. He said he was talking to his friend on his phone. He's like, oh, there's like some really gross mushy spaghetti here today. You want to like order in food or something? And like, that traumatized me. He wasn't wrong though. It was some really gross spaghetti, but that traumatized me, and uh, obviously I still have uh, not gone over it because I still remember that to this day. So thanks. Um, oh shit! And I think that guy was actually a guy who was in that fucking pickup game I had freshman year. No fucking, I'm not even fucking like lying or like joking with you guys. So like that may have been, um, he may have been a bad omen in my life. But yeah, that was that. Um, sorry. Had to look at my notes. There's one more story here, which is that my fucking printer. Hold on, I need to check that I'm recording. My fucking printer. I'm mixing up two different stories. Uh, yeah, the story, the story is that my freshman year, uh, while I was hashing, so I was doing the dishes, um, at the dining hall I come out to where my bike is parked and locked up to this thing I come out and a fucking tree has fucking crashed on top of the bike rack area and crushed my bike I'm not even joking like this like a literal like fucking 20 foot tree just fucking decided to die that day and also die exactly on top of uh, my bike and I, I uh, yeah, that's just bad luck. That's, I should have just known right then and there. That's Stanford. I should have just fucking left. Like, that's some horror movie shit. But you know what? I saw that shit, and I was like, you know what? This house has a lot of charm. It may be haunted. Uh, there may be bloodstains appearing on the mirror often. But I really love living here with my uh, my two children and wife. So I'm just keep doing this. When I really, I should have just fucking ran for the hills. But yeah, my bike got crushed and um, I had to go to the bike store to get it repaired. <laughs> One last thing I have, which I wrote down in my notes, which is a total non sequitur. Printers are fucking expensive at Stanford. I remember having to print essays and they charge like 20 cents per piece of paper or some shit. That's ridiculous, Stanford. That's ridiculous. You're telling me. I, I, I don't even know how that makes sense, Stanford. Like, All my shit's been blown up. Man, I, I'm so poor <laughs> right now. But, uh, yeah, Stanford, you're telling me you can't fucking afford free printers? Get the fuck out of here. Uh, that's some bullshit. But, yeah, that's my Stanford story. Sorry if I was talking fast because I think normally I talk kind of slower and it's kind of more calming. But today I actually had a bunch of stories to get through. So maybe next time I'll have less stories so that... Um, Y'all don't get stressed out watching me talk in this video. But, yeah, those are the stories. I hope you guys appreciate it. I uh, hope you guys like it. Um, shout out to the guy who uh, messaged Cardinal, Conf Cardinal Confessions uh, or Stanford Confessions, whatever the fucking Instagram page is called. Uh, th thanks for messaging them about me and uh, getting me that exposure. Getting me, getting us. 
we're a team, you and you and I, subscribers and me. Whatever. Let's get let's put the ego away, introverted madness. Thank you, subscribers, for you know, I really enjoy doing this and it makes me happy that people enjoy watching me do this. And uh, also, if you guys could bother uh, Stanford Confessions to accept my follower request um, because I try to follow them and they rejected me. And uh, I don't know what a man has to do to get uh, accepted uh, into, the f into the follow list of Stanford Confessions, but I would like that so that I can uh, screenshot that and then um, put it on my refrigerator because I'm a big boy now. But um, yeah. That's this episode, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. It actually really does mean a lot. And I hope everyone's doing well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Leave a like if you did. Subscribe if you do want to subscribe. I'm trying to help the channel grow. All that good stuff. And yeah, I hope everyone's doing well. And if you're in Stanford right now, good luck. If you're not Stanford, also good luck because life is a bitch sometimes. But yeah, that's this episode, guys. Hope you, everyone has a magical uh, day and week and life, and I'll catch y'all in the next episode. All right. Peace!